The Joint Special Operations Command is a component command of the United States Special Operations Command and is charged to study special operations requirements and techniques to ensure interoperability and equipment standardization, plan and conduct special operations exercises and training, develop joint special operations tactics and execute special operations missions worldwide. It was established in 1980 on recommendation of Colonel Charlie Beckett, in the aftermath of the failure of Operation Eagle Claw. It is located at Pope Field in North Carolina, USA. Overview The JSOC is the joint headquarters designed to study special operations requirements and techniques, ensure interoperability and equipment standardization, plan and conduct joint special operations exercises and training and develop joint special operations tactics. For this task, the Joint Communications Unit is tasked to ensure compatibility of communication systems and standard operating procedures of the different special operations units. Special Mission Units The Joint Special Operations Command also commands and controls the Special Mission Units of U.S. Special Operations Command. These units perform highly classified activities. So far, only three SMUs have been publicly disclosed, the Army's 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Eurodelta, the Navy's Naval Special Warfare Development Group, SEAL Team 6, and the Air Force's 24th Special Tactics Squadron. Units from the Army Euro Unregistered Trademark S 75th Ranger Regiment and 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment are controlled by JSOC when deployed as part of JSOC task forces such as Task Force 121 and Task Force 145. The intelligence support activity is also under JSOC. The ISA collects specific target intelligence working closely with the NSA and prior to SMU missions provide signal support, etc. during missions. The Army once maintained the ISA, but after the September 11 attacks, the Pentagon shifted direct control to Joint Special Operations Command at Fort Bragg, NC. JSOC A Euro unregistered trademark as primary mission is to identify and eliminate terror cells worldwide. JSOC has an operational relationship with the CIA's Special Activities Division, SAD. SAD's Special Operations Group often recruits from JSOC. Advanced Force Operations Advanced Force Operations is a term used by the U.S. Department of Defense to describe a task force that encompasses personnel from 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, DEVRU and U.S. Army Intelligence Support Activity. According to General Michael Repass, who conducted it in the Iraq War and was very familiar with its use in Afghanistan, AFO consists of U.S. Secretary of Defense approved military operations such as clandestine operations, source operations, and deployment of enabling forces and capabilities to conduct target specific preparations prior to the conduct of an actual operation. It is logically part of operational preparation of the battle space which follows the intelligence preparation of the battle space, a concept well known in U.S. and NATO doctrine, OPB is seldom used outside of Special Operations Forces channels. OPB is defined by the U.S. Special Operations Command as a Euro OE non-intelligence activities conducted prior to D-Day, H-Hour, in likely or potential areas of employment, to train and prepare for follow-on military operations. An AFO unit reported to JSOC in the Afghanistan War. In the Iraq War, Respus, who first commanded the 10th Special Forces Group, took control of a joint unconventional warfare task force, which used the 5th and 10th groups to conduct AFO. AFO units were heavily involved in Operation Anaconda and Operation Viking Hammer. JSO Package Slash Rotational Group the Joint Special Operations Package Slash Rotational Group of the United States Special Operations Command consists of Tier 1 and Tier 2 U.S. Joint Special Operations Command units that train and deploy together. All Tier 1 and Tier 2 units maintain three separate operational groups within their respective units as an example. These groups are essentially identical and deploy within their respective JSOC package. The rotational cycle is generally three months. This allows one group to be deployed overseas, another to be on an 18-hour worldwide emergency deployment notice, 
and the last group to be training, attending military schools, or on block leave. Tier 1 and Tier 2 units take leave together within their respective JSOC package. This term is called block leave. Given the wartime tasking of JSOC, an additional deployment package is currently being created. This will allow less operational strain on these units. Security Support JSOC has provided support to domestic law enforcement agencies during high-profile or high-risk events such as the Olympics, the World Cup, political party conventions and presidential inaugurations. Although use of the military for law enforcement purposes in the U.S. is generally prohibited by the Posse Comitatus Act, Title X of the U.S. Code expressly allows the Secretary of Defense to make military personnel available to train federal, state, and local civilian law enforcement officials in the operation and maintenance of equipment, and to provide such law enforcement officials with expert advice. Additionally, civilian and uniformed military lawyers said provisions in several federal statutes, including the Fiscal Year 2000 Defense Department Authorization Act, Public Law 106-65, permits the Secretary of Defense to authorize military forces to support civilian agencies, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation, in the event of a national emergency, especially any involving nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons. In January 2005, a small group of commandos were deployed to support security at the presidential inauguration. They were allegedly deployed under a secret counterterrorism program named Power Giza. The New York Times quoted a senior military official as saying, They bring unique military and technical capabilities that often are centered around potential WMD events. A civil liberties advocate who was told about the program by a reporter said that he had no objections to the program as described to him because its scope appeared to be limited to supporting the counterterrorism efforts of civilian authorities. Operations in Pakistan, according to the Washington Post, JSOC's Commander Lieutenant General Stanley McChrystal operated in 2006 on the understanding with Pakistan that U.S. units will not enter Pakistan except under extreme circumstances, and that Pakistan will deny giving them permission if exposed. That scenario happened according to the Islamic Republic News Agency. In January 2006, JSOC troops clandestinely entered the village of Said Gai, Pakistan, to hunt for Osama bin Laden. Pakistan refused entry. According to a November 2009 report in The Nation, JSOC, in tandem with Blackwater Xi, has an ongoing drone program, along with snatch assassination operations, based in Karachi and conducted both in and outside of Pakistan. In an October 2009 leak published on the WikiLeaks website, U.S. Embassy communication cables from the U.S. Ambassador to Pakistan and W. Patterson states the Pakistani Army approved the embedding of U.S. Special Operations Forces, including elements from the Joint Special Operations Command, with the Pakistani military to provide support for operations in the country. This goes beyond the original claims of the U.S. that the only role of the Special Forces was in training the Pakistani military. The leak further revealed that JSOC elements involved in intelligence gathering and surveillance and use of drone UAV technology. JSOC is credited with coordination of Operation Neptune Spear that resulted in the death of Osama bin Laden on May 1, 2011, operations in Afghanistan. According to the movie Dirty Wars by Jeremy Scahill, JSOC was responsible for a number of raids in Afghanistan. One among them took place in Gardez initially reported by Jerome Starkey but later in other media as well. The then-current commander William McRaven visited the affected family, offered them a sheep in restitution and apologized for the incident. In the incident one U.S. trained police commander and another man were killed, as were three women, two of whom were pregnant, while going to the men's aid. How many other raids there were during this time, and before and since, it's difficult to count as JSOC only answers to the White House and not the rest of the military. The secrecy around the number of raids could reasonably be counted in the hundreds since they started but only a mere few have been documented as well as the Gardas incident according to Scarhill. Operations in Iraq On January 11, 2007, President Bush pledged in a major speech to seek out and destroy the networks providing advanced weaponry and training to our enemies in Iraq. 
The next day, in a meeting of the U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, Chairman Senator Joseph Biden informed U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice that the Bush administration did not have the authority to send U.S. troops on cross-border raids. Biden said, I believe the present authorization granted the president to use force in Iraq does not cover that, and he does need congressional authority to do that. I just want to set that marker. Sometime in 2007, JSOC started conducting cross-border operations into Iran from southern Iraq with the CIA. These operations included seizing members of al qaeda the commando arm of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and taking them to Iraq for interrogation, as well as the pursuit, capture or killing of high-value targets in the war on terror. The Bush administration allegedly combined the CIA's intelligence operations and covert action with JSOC clandestine military operations so that Congress would only partially see how the money was spent. Operations in Somalia On October 28, 2013 a drone strike by JSOC on a vehicle near the town of Jilib in Lower Shabal killed two senior Somali members of Al-Shabaab. Preliminary evidence suggested that one of them was Ibrahim Ali an explosive specialist known for his skill in building and using homemade bombs and suicide vests. The U.S. administration has been reluctant to use drone strikes in Somalia. The reluctance partly centered around questions of whether al Shabaab a euro, which has not tried to carry out an attack on American soil a euro could legally be the target of lethal operations by the military or the CIA. In May 2013, the White House announced that it would carry out targeted killing operations only against those who posed a a euro e continuing and imminent threat to the American people a euro the strike on October 28 was the first known American operation resulting in a death since that policy was announced and is considered evidence by some observers that views have changed in Washington and that the Obama administration has decided to escalate operations against al Shabaab in the aftermath of the group's Westgate shopping mall attack in Nairobi, Kenya that took place from 21. A Euro September 24, 2013 and which left some 70 people dead. Operations in Yemen, Anwar al-Awlaki, a Yemeni-American U.S. citizen, was killed on September 30, 2011, by an air attack carried out by the Joint Special Operations Command. After several days of surveillance of al-Awlaki by the Central Intelligence Agency, armed drones took off from a new, secret American base in the Arabian Peninsula, crossed into northern Yemen and unleashed a barrage of hellfire missiles at El al Alaki's vehicle. Samir Khan, a Pakistani-American Al-Qaeda member and editor of the Jihadist Inspire magazine, also reportedly died in the attack. The combined CIA-JSOC drone strike was the first in Yemen since 2002 a Euro there have been others by the military a Euro unregistered trademark S Special Operations Forces a Euro, and was part of an effort by the spy agency to duplicate in Yemen the cover war which has been running in Afghanistan and Pakistan. According to the New York Times the Yemen government banned military drone operations after a series of botched drone strikes by JSOC the last of which was a December 2013 drone strike that killed numerous civilians at a wedding ceremony. Despite a ban on military drone operations the Yemen government allowed CIA drone operations to continue. List of JSOC commanders, see also, Naval Special Warfare Development Group, 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment, Delta, U.S. Air Force 24th Special Tactics Squadron, Intelligence Support Activity, Central Intelligence Agency's Special Activities Division Special Operations Group, Strategic Support Branch, Targeted Killing, References. Further reading, Benson, Gary. Zulo, Ralph. Jawbreaker, The Attack on Bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, a personal account by the CIA's key field commander. Crown. ISBN A0-307-35106-8. Doughty, William J. Executive Secrets, Covert Action and the Presidency. University Press of Kentucky. ISBN A0-8131-9161-0A, Emerson, Stephen. Secret Warriors, Inside the Cover Military Operations of the Reagan Era. New York, G. P. Putnam Sons. ISBN A 0 399 13360 7 Smith, 
Michael. Killer Elite, the inside story of America's most secret special operations team. London, Castle. ISBN A0-304-36727-3 Stephen, Graham C.S. and Gunaratna, Rowan. Counterterrorism, a reference handbook. Contemporary World Issues. ISBN A978-1-85109-606. External links. Special Ops A Lives Were Online and Lynch's Rescue, by The Washington Times, U.S. Special Operations Come of Age, by Global Defense Review.